Today I'm going to attempt the longest braid I've ever done in my life and I did a really long jumbo braid for my trip to LA that I thought was going to be a really good tutorial but I accidentally deleted the footage so instead of redoing it I'm just gonna do a longer one and see how long we can go. So this is what I'm starting with. And I have a bunch of synthetic hair that I got from a photo shoot. You can check it out on my Instagram. But I just kept the hair so I could repurpose it for something fun like this. So the first step is going to be combing my hair out. And you can blow dry it straight if you want to, but I'm going to avoid doing that because I don't want to put any heat on my hair. So I'm just going to detangle it and then pull it taut when I'm braiding. And next I'm going to prep the braiding hair and I'm just going to put them into little sections so they're easier to work with. So this is what my hair looks like combed out. Harrison, what do you think? It looks fantastic. Thank you. I kind of want to wear it like this sometime. <laughs> Thank you. I think this would be cute for a shoot someday, but we are here to braid, so let's detangle these. For these, I'm just using scissors to cut out these little rubber bands. Nail shot. I did these yesterday. Last night. This is synthetic hair, so it's like kind of tangled. I feel like it tangles more easily, but it is way cheaper. And here's a low quality picture of the packaging I took at the photo shoot when I was like, I should probably try to remember what hair this is. So I'm holding this in the middle and then I'm using my little loopy detangling brush that's for synthetic hair. And I'm just going to brush this out so that it'll be easier to braid with. So once it slides through very easily, you know you're detangled. And then the last part of prep is to take this and put it into smaller sections so you can braid different pieces in and feed it into the braid. So I'm just taking some skinny sections like this. And this is gonna be for the small part of the braid. I'm gonna show you guys that really soon. And for the main braid, I'm taking sections this wide. So these are the size differences. Now that my hair is brushed out and the braiding hair is detangled, I'm going to start putting my hair up into the ponytail shape that I want. And last time I did this, I had a hard time making it exactly straight. And this is why you're lucky my last video got deleted because this one's better. So I'm gonna really focus on that. And I decided that I'm going to just take the hair right around it and figure out exactly where I want that ponytail to be placed and then slowly add more hair to it to make sure that everything is exactly even and also very flat. Because my hair isn't blow dried or straightened, I wanna make sure that it lays as flat as possible and I think that is going to be the easiest way to do it. To make sure the braid is perfectly centered, I did a middle part just so I can find the center and then I'm gonna have the braid starting from my Ariana which is the spot that Ariana has all of her ponytails, just like high pony centered and like kind of at the top of your head. So you wanna put your fingers where you think that would be and then look up and see like, will that be visible if you're looking straight, if you're looking sideways, like where is that one point that you really want it to start? So I'm gonna get the circle of hair around that. So I'm really happy with this being the area that the ponytail's coming from. So I'm going to make sure that I really smooth that section down, comb it out. Then I'm using a clear elastic to secure it exactly in place where I want it to stay. I'm gonna tighten it. And just make sure this feels really good on your hair and it's not pulling because the whole braid's weight will be on this section. So now I'm gonna add some leave-in conditioner and this is the African Pride Olive Miracle Leave-In Conditioner. Then I'm going in with some gel. This is the Madam by Madam CJ Walker Humidity Styling Gel. For the leave-in conditioner, I'm just gonna scoop this much. And I'm just gonna kind of put it everywhere. Grabbing more for my ends. And with the gel, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm kind of focusing the gel on the outer sections where it will be slipped down on top but I am putting it through everywhere and definitely getting the ends. Now that the product is in, I'm gonna comb my hair to make sure it stays detangled and is also going in the direction that the braid is going. So I wanna get rid of this center part and make sure everything goes directly back and lays flat.
A good way to get the back flat is to just go upside down and comb it like that. That way your hands hurt less than just going straight up like that. So once everything is combed, you wanna pull it together with that center section in the center and just do one last comb through to make sure that all of the hair is sitting flat. And this is because I have texture in my hair. So I'm trying to make sure there aren't like curly lumps or anything, but if you have straighter or wavier hair, it's probably not that serious. I'm gonna temporarily hold this in place. Now I can put in the strong stuff. Anyone with edges, anyone who wear wigs, you guys know this stuff, got to be glued. Super strong gel. And this is what's really gonna keep my hair in place. So I'm just gonna spread that liberally, almost as liberal as I am, all over top, bottom, sides, everywhere. Then I'm taking my boar bristle brush to smooth that down. And this is what makes it actually lay like flat, flat. Better than the comb, this is like really smoothing it down. I have the scrunchie to hold it in place so I don't have to juggle holding both at the same time while I'm smoothing. Also makes it easier to do the back. Once you're really satisfied with how smooth it is, you can take out the scrunchie. And then you pull your hair taut, put in that scrunchie. One thing I always do when I do a really tight ponytail is I make sure I tilt my head down a little bit because if you don't do that, the hairs at the back of your neck will be so tight that you won't be able to tilt your head down while you have the ponytail in and it will like tug on your hair and be so painful. So just make sure that you at least tilt your head down a little bit if you're putting in a really tight pony. Double check if you like the placement because from here on out, there is no going back. So now's the fun part and we're gonna get braiding. But if you wanna get really fancy with it, you can take a fourth piece, just a small section and put that aside. So we have three main pieces and then one little section. I'm just gonna set aside these three big sections for now. I'm gonna comb out this little section and I'm gonna turn this into a skinny braid and I'm gonna use the same method I'm showing you for the big one. So with this smaller section, I've divided it into three pieces and I'm going to braid it like a regular braid and just get that started a little bit. And now that I have a good grip, I'm going to, in between these two sections, I'm going to add some braiding hair. So I'm holding it from the middle, and I'm just going to place it in between those, and then keep braiding. So once you braid that a couple times, it's time to add another section. Same way, but make sure that when you add it, you're alternating which piece is going to be crossed on top of it so that you can spread out the thickness of your braid. At this point, I feel like it's starting to taper, so I'm gonna add in another section right here and then just keep braiding it in. Another section. At this point, I'm gonna add one more section. When it gets to the point where your arms are stretched out and you're having a hard time braiding, you can just shorten the braid and keep going. Just be careful. One more section. Okay, one more section. Braid's getting long again. The end of the braid, you wanna put an elastic to hold it in place. And this is how long it is. So it's time to move on to the big braid. I'm just going to quickly detangle these sections again, just to make sure that the top of the braid comes out smoothly. I'm being really careful on this next part and it's just starting the braid. And you want to make sure that when you're doing it, you're looking forwards, you're pulling your hair directly backwards and you're not pulling it sideways because then your braid will be lopsided and like kind of go to the side instead of like center and straight back and I kind of did that last time so I learned from that mistake. It's the same method as when I did the little braid. I just take the hair and I put it in this V and then I keep braiding. I'm gonna add another section. I'm going to add a little to even it out right now. 
and a little more. This part is hard because I'm getting to where the end of my natural hair is, so it's gonna get puffy. So you gotta make sure you add the right density so it doesn't look like too puffy at that point. I'm gonna try and pull as tightly as possible to just lock in that natural hair. Adding another section. I'm gonna detangle what I have in right now because it does get tangled during the process. Add in some more hair. Obviously this isn't the best braid ever. I definitely should not have done my nails so long with all these charms yesterday. And this is also the second time I've ever done this. But I think I'm getting better at it each time and I'm perfecting my method. So this is just how it looks right now and it's good enough for me. As it gets short again, I'm adding in more hair. More hair. It's getting too long to reach again, so I'm going to wrap so I can keep braiding. More hair. Some more. Double wrap. And one last section of hair. Now at the end, I'm going to use a clear elastic and tie it off. So this is what the two braids look like. They're pretty much full body. And the last thing I'm gonna do is take the little braid and wrap it around the big one like a spiral so it can be braid section. And I think it just looks cooler and also like my braid isn't perfect so it will distract from that. So this is what the braid section looks like. I'm making a knot at the end where this little braid ends. I'm just gonna loop it through itself, pull that tight, and then I'm cutting off the excess. I'm also gonna cut off just this much on the end of the braid. Last thing to do here is edges. So I'm using the softy edge control and my little pink brush. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just use this edge control to smooth down the entire top section because it just gives like the smoothest hold and it holds it really well. And since it's edge control and not gel, it stays in place um, even more and it's thicker. So this gives you like a really smooth top. So you can leave your hair fully smoothed back or you can add edges and I'm just gonna do a little something something. A couple swoops up in there. Maybe it's because the time period I grew up in on YouTube, but you have to add the swoops. I feel like it's mandatory for me. Not for you, but for me. Okay, so here's the finished look. It's a jumbo braid with a little braid around it, kind of like a double helix, and it's floor length, so I can wear it all the way on the floor. I can have my man's walk behind me to hold it so it doesn't get dirty. Or you could wrap it around your neck. You could have a scarf. You know it's kind of cold out there. Um, you could do whatever you want with it. So I'm really happy with how it turned out, but if you have any tips on how to do jumbo braids or braids in general, drop those tips in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching.